Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. You know, we have talked again and again and again on this channel about how most gun control that exists today has its roots in racism. Racists wrote these laws. It was back in the days of Jim Crow and before when black people were starting to actually have some power in society, being considered real people, and a bunch of white people went, oh crap, they might decide to get revenge for all the things we've done to them over the last, you know, whatever years. So we need to make sure they don't have guns, among other things. They tried to make it hard for them to vote, all these other things. Made it to where you couldn't vote if you couldn't read, knowing most of them didn't know how to read. Same thing with guns. They found ways to pass these laws that by far affected black people more commonly than it would white people. Uh, one of the things is the whole felon thing, not being able to own guns if you've had a felony conviction because they couldn't say make a law that says, hey, black people can't own guns. So what they did is they made a law that says, hey, felons can't own guns. And now all we got to do is go around and throw a bunch of uh, ridiculous felony charges on some black people that can't afford to defend themselves and then even plea them out of a felony, let them go. They can't own guns. Most laws were based on that. It was based on keeping guns out of the hands of minorities because of a bunch of small-minded racists didn't think they could either handle the responsibility or would use the newfound power to take revenge. So they passed all these racist gun laws. Almost all gun laws you can trace back now have their roots in racist beliefs. That's just reality. In fact, if you support gun control, I think you're kind of a racist. But I want to say that's really not the case anymore. Uh, it's not that gun laws still aren't racist and don't, still don't affect minorities more so than they do white people, but they've actually become a little more inclusive now to where it's not just blacks and other minorities, but it's also poor people of any color. We have moved on from gun laws being about racism to being about classism. Nowadays, it's bunch of uh, highfalutin people look sitting in their ivory, uh, ivory towers looking down on common people going, wow, those people just can't be trusted with guns. You know, and in a way they're right. If poor people have guns, they are more likely to be involved in a crime than rich people. If you took a uh, hundred millionaires and a hundred everyday working class people living paycheck to paycheck and gave every one of them a gun, there is a slightly higher chance that the poorer person might be involved in a crime or, you know, a love triangle or something where a firearm gets misused. Also, there's more of a chance that someone in that group is going to have an untreated mental illness and misuse a firearm because of that than in the uh, millionaire group because they tend to be able to buy their way out of any problems or just move along if something in their life that they don't like, they just move on to something else. And if they have issues, they usually get treated. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, what about all the rock stars and stuff we hear that, you know, off themselves because of depression and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's because of, you know, mental illness and drug abuse. But I guarantee you for every person you hear about that's rich and famous that does that, there's hundreds that nobody mentions at all that are poor because they don't matter as far as society is concerned because they're poor. They're not rich and famous. So you get it shoved down your throat that rich people off themselves all the time. Not nearly as common in wealthy populations as it is in poorer populations. So get that out of your head. Uh, but like I said, what they're doing now is they're moving from racism to classism. And a perfect example of this is what's going on in San Jose, California right now. What they are doing in San Jose is they are passing a law that says if you want to own a gun, you have to be financially stable enough that you can afford these other things too. You have to be able to buy an insurance policy and maintain an insurance policy. And you also have to uh, pay a yearly tax, which is an unspecified amount. And I'm betting it's going to be based every year on how much they spend in law enforcement, etc., and they're making it looks like they're calling this a uh, gun crime prevention tax by saying, well, if you can afford to pay the tax, you're probably not going to commit a crime. That's just blatantly saying poor people shouldn't have guns. 
charging them extra when they buy a gun, making them keep an insurance policy that most of them either can't afford or wouldn't even know how to go about getting in any way they could afford. That's just keeping poor people from owning guns, no matter their color. We live in a country that is very much divided, and there is reason to have animosity to each other. But it's not a division of race, it's a division of have and have not. Wealthy people have been exploiting poor people in this country forever, and they have consolidated the, the money to where it's only a few families that control everything now, and the people they deem worthy are the ones that they think should have rights, and everyone else shouldn't. Like I said, requiring you to pay a tax every year just to exercise your Second Amendment rights and calling it a crime prevention tax or gun crime prevention tax, that's just saying poor people commit crimes. If you can afford to pay this tax, you won't commit a crime. Because how would paying the tax prevent you from committing a crime? It wouldn't. And how will uh, you make criminals who have unregistered guns, as they like to call them, or guns they shouldn't even have, how are you going to make them pay a tax? And what if a county decided, you know what, in this Texas county, we're deciding that if you can't afford to pay $100 to vote every year, then you shouldn't be allowed to vote because you can't be trusted. People would go berserk. But for some reason, the Second Amendment, they're okay with that being denied to people on monetary reasons. And it's because we have these people that are in power in this country now that are like, poor people don't matter, they're insignificant, and they can't be trusted. Instead of saying, well, why are poor people in these situations? Well, maybe it's because we've consolidated all the money, don't give them any, work them like dogs, don't let them have access to medical care, and never give them any hope of a future. No, it's not that. It's, wow, ah, they're poor, so we can't trust them. At least that's the excuse they use. And they're not even hiding it as much anymore as they used to. Uh, I mean, this has been going on for a couple of decades, but now they're not even bothering to hide it. They're basically saying you can own a gun if you can afford it. And if you can't afford it, then you don't need to have one. And even putting aside the fact that this whole tax that's supposed to cover the cost of gun violence, well, isn't it already taxes that pay for the police department? So what are you going to do, double fund the police, or are you just going to put that money in your pockets? San Jose City Council. But like I said, this is blatant class warfare. It's denying rights to people based on their economic placement on that economic ladder, that social ladder. And it's very clear. It's as clear as those previous laws were written to prevent black people and other minorities from owning guns. It was wrong then, it's wrong now. It still affects minorities disproportionately to, to white people, just saying poor people, because more minorities have a greater chance, you know, percentage-wise, of being lower income, immigrants, etc. But it's also including all poor white people, too, like in places like uh, San Jose. And as I've said, Bloomberg is a big driver of all this, and it's very clearly classism. It's rich people saying that the only way we're ever going to stay rich and keep everything we have is if poor people can't fight back. So let's take their rights away and uh, say we're doing it for the safety of everybody, but when what they're really doing is they're just determining, like I said, the only way they ever get to stay special and different is if they prevent everyone else from deciding they're not so special. All right, everybody, I rambled on there, so I am out of time. I want to thank everybody for coming today. I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I just want to remind everyone to always carry and stay safe until I see you again. <laughs>